I'm Kevin Mamajek, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Okay, so let's see what else we can do, right? So we've kind of looked at how we set up the analytic service. We kind of looked at um, doing a real basic query. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build an algorithm. And so this algorithm, we're going to just have it look at um, a valve or a, a damper position and tell us how long it's been at that current value. That way we can kind of look at um, running a report or an interface where it comes up and says, um, we've got uh, an issue with this particular set of VAVs or something like that. So when we start to look at the, the, the major advantages of, of creating algorithms is I create the algorithm once and then I can deploy it anywhere in the station and I only have to do the logic for that algorithm once. And so in the analytic service, there is a uh, algorithms folder. If I wanted to create an algorithm, all I have to do is start out by dropping an algorithm in, or I can come over here and say new, and that will, you know, essentially create a wire sheet for me that gives me um, the basics of what I need to start with, which is I need to have a result. This result is essentially the logic all has to terminate into this result. And say, and what you can do here is the result can either be true, false, or it can be a value. In order to get data into this algorithm, you have to drop a data source block. Okay, and that is essentially putting the pathway in place that allows you to pass the data that's identified by the tag inside the data source block. So if I was looking for um, HSVAV for that tag, I can go ahead and then I've got the data source block set up to look for uh, that tag and then that tag's data will then pass through this. At this point, um, I can now plumb it into logic or I can plumb it into the result and uh, essentially the last value that comes through will be placed in the result. Okay, and I'll show you we're going to create a algorithm that looks at the duration and then gives us uh, what that result is. That's as simple as um, on how to create a algorithm. There are little different things in here in that when you look at um, math blocks, right, you have this thing called by math. So essentially it gives you and, uh, subtract, multiply, divide, right? Um, if you look at Unimath, you can look at it has absolute value, cosine, right? So it's got a bunch of the statistical components, right? So instead of having individual blocks, these are kind of joined together in one block for the analytics. That's the basics of, of how you would set it up. So if we look at my station, I have this uh, damper. Uh, it's an algorithm called VAV damper duration. And so you'll see in the block, I'm looking for haystack VAV, and then I'm also doing a filter against uh, haystack damper, right? So if it has those two tags, I want it to go in. Now, it's important because set up the setup to this, right? I'm, I'm kind of doing the cooking method, right? Where I show you the ingredients and then voila, we're done, right? So <laughs> this, you have to think when you call your algorithm, if you want to pass any overrides, which I do in this case, you want to think through that because if you don't turn these to true, it will ignore anything you pass along with that call of that algorithm. Okay, so in this one, I'm, I'm, I really don't worry about the roll-up, so I could leave that to false, but I need the aggregation to be true because I'm going to show you what we can do to um, look at a set of things to find out if there's a, a problem with a set. Okay, so with that then, um, I have my data. Essentially, I used a uh, block for value duration, and that value duration lets me say, okay, here's my search window. So I'm going to go eight hours into the history, and I'm going to look at what that last value was. And if it is um, within that eight-hour window, it will tell me how long that value has been accounted for, and it's going to return hours. I can return minutes, seconds, or milliseconds. I just chose hours, okay, and now uh, you'll you'll see why. And so, that's pretty much how I set this up. Um, in comes a value, right? It will look at that 
damper position or that valve position, it will go back in time and say within this eight hour window, how long has that value been in that state? And then it passes me that answer. Okay. So if we come down here to my examples, then I have essentially a series of VAVs. Okay. Now the, the, Trouble is, I spent more time trying to make test data for you guys to show uh, than it was actually creating the actual algorithm. So I'll kind of break it down. Um, here's my data simulator. So that's nothing new. There's a, a tip on that. Uh, I didn't do any randomization just so that I can create the data sets that I wanted them to be, right? So I had control of exactly what's happening. So there's no randomization in there. This is where my uh, tags are. So if we look at this, um, right, you can see that I've got the VAV, the damper, and the A colon A tag for that data. And so I just duplicated that, all right, and I've got uh, six VAVs. The first two, I think, are the same. And then I, I went into the schedule and screwed it up so that I could get some values. And then I created a PX page that shows me um, what's happening with these VAV. So this, this could be a, a real-time dashboard and I'm gonna show you how you convert it to alert. But as I ran these, right, it, it ran the, I tr pulled, uh, pulled the trigger on the polar, it went through and evaluated. Um, and I think three hours is my window. So three hours, anything over three hours, it's gonna give me a stuck indicator. So here's five, two, this one was at uh, 2.2 hours. This is at 0.7 hours, but you get the idea, right? It's going back, looking at that last position for this specific VAV. And if we look at there, I have that proxy point that I love, right? That analytic proxy point that calls the algorithm relatively. So it's really only gonna look at VAV one. It's gonna run this algorithm, right? And it's gonna, it's got the history, so it can go back through there and see when that value changes, and then it gives me how long it's been in that state. And so each one of the VAVs has the exact same block. I just copied and pasted it, but since it's relative, it will look at VAV 2's history, then VAV 3's history. So each block will look at that only level. Now, what I did, though, is if you look at this PX page, there's this master alarm. What I want it to do is to look down at all of the VAVs. This is one I haven't wired up yet. Look at all the VAVs and then determine whether if one of them is stuck to go ahead and do the master alarm. Okay. Kind I just watched Apollo 13. So anyways, I'll go to the wire sheet here. And so what you'll see here is here's all the VAVs in their folders, but this one is relative but what I did is I do an override where I say aggregate all of that and give me the max value of those six. So really what's gonna happen is um, in this comparison, it's gonna run through the max value and tell me whether it's over that three hour window. So essentially it's, it's duplicating whatever one is down here, but it's looking at all of them as an aggregate and taking that one max value, then running it through the formula. And so now what I can do is, is as long as one of these is stuck, the master alarm will indicate that it's stuck. Okay. So that's pretty, um, pretty simple. My, you know, my UI here is just going and looking for VAV1. This is giving me VAV uh, fours information, but you get the idea, right? And I just kind of wired them up. So that gives me that real time thing. So a lot of times I get a question, okay, that's, that's great. I'd have to look at this dashboard um, in order to determine whether there's a stuck VAV. So how do you do algorithms that kind of work on your behalf? And that's where this alert um, component comes involved. So what happens here is I, I essentially want the um, algorithm to run on a poll rate and then kind of report back what it's found. And so if you look at this, it's giving me that VAV1 is in alert mode, which means it's found the problem five and six, one, five, and six, which was what my real time actually gave. But this one allows me to then set it up so that I can actually send it to an alarm console, right? So this can kind of prompt me to go look that I have an issue. And this can run, right now I have it on the triggered polar, but you could have it run every, you know, 15 minutes, every hour, whatever you want. But these alerts allow you to do that. Now, what's interesting is when I created my algorithm, 
I'm getting a value back for my real-time display, right? I'm saying here, this one has been open eight hours or this one's been open four hours or five hours. When you do an alert, you need your result to be true or false. So here I had to kind of take this, duplicate it and do a little rework because now I have to take a value and turn it into true false. And so here I just use a, a, a buy switch that brings in, I have my warning at three hours it does the comparison inside the algorithm, and then the end result will be, was it greater than or equal to, true or false, right? And so I send it true, false, those are just plumbing in the, the constants. Um, but if it is greater than or equal to three, then I will get a true. I found the problem. It's beyond that window. And so that's how you set up a algorithm to be an alert. If the algorithm already gives you true false, you're already set up. If you've got an algorithm that's giving you a value and you need to turn it into an alert, you just need to put uh, a couple blocks in there that change it from the value to a, a true false. And then that way, um, again, that can run in the alert space and give you uh, essentially uh, which products or which devices are in alert mode and that could pump it up to an alarm console. So that is how you do a simple algorithm with Niagara 4 Analytics.